Shalom my friends. Today I'm going to do this video on the flat earth and this is going to be part one and I may add to it. I may not but I'm going to label it part one. Uh, first I want you to know we may not all agree and that's okay. You may not believe as I believe and that's okay. I am simply trying to share what my research and my time reading the scriptures has revealed, along with all of my research into a lot of other um, things. And I'm going to present those the evidence and, the, and this to you. Um, please know there's, a, there's a, a treasure trove of information out there um, on my own Facebook page or on my own YouTube page, sorry. You can go to um, the section where it says other flat earth videos and you'll find I've archived a whole host of other people's stuff there too. Um, part of that's part of my research and part of that is is just things that I found interesting that I wanted to share with you and put in a playlist. So, But if you're really interested in this, I, I would encourage you to do your own research. Encourage you to do uh, good research and not just believe what mainstream science, uh, which I call pseudoscience. I don't even call mainstream science real science anymore. But anyway, uh, please remember... We were commanded by the Savior to do all things in love. I'm not telling any of you, you obviously have to believe as I do. I'm simply sharing with you this interesting information and perspective. I'm going to start with the scriptures and then we're going to look at uh, and move past that to the scriptures into other evidence. So let's start here. So all of these next verses that I'm going to have read to you are all regarding the foundations of the earth and the earth um, and then we're going to take a pause I'm going to pause we're going to look at Isaiah 40 22 so let's start at Psalms 104 5 uh, he set the earth on its foundations that it should never be moved well my understanding is that if you're spinning on a, on a globe you're moving the foundations he says here don't move. So we have a paradox. Okay. Job 38 4. You now, this is the father speaking to Job, and he says, Where were you when I laid the foundations of the earth? Tell me if you have understanding. Okay. Now, here's 11. Here's Isaiah. Isaiah 40 22. And this is one that science likes to use. Um, and they misused one of the Hebrew words here, circle, and I'm going to present to you what the Strong's definition is uh, and then show you that the writer in this verse also understood the difference between these two words. Okay, but Isaiah 40, 22, it says, It is he who sits above the circle of the earth, and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers, who stretches out the heavens like a curtain, and spread them like a tent to dwell in. Now, if we follow the Hebraic context of the word circle, in the Hebrew means circle, not ball. They are completely different words, okay? That's the one nice thing about Hebrew is, is it's very hard when you understand them to actually confuse them. In Strong's 2328, the word is chug, and it, the primitive root is uh, to uh, describe a circle or compass. Uh, or 2329, chug, same word, um, from a circle, a circuit, or compass. Okay? Now, so in here we, we, we're going to look at, in Isaiah 18, we see him use the word ball. And a lot of uh, Hebrew has Hebrew word puns or Hebrew idioms. Part of the reason the author does this is so that they are letting you know we know what the difference between two words are. Um, and they did it in a very poetic way. So anyway, Isaiah 22, 18. And whirl you around and around and throw you like a ball into a wide land. There you shall die, and there shall be your glorious chariots. You, you shame your own master's house. Now, this word ball here 
in red. Uh, 1752 is the word dur, or dur. It's a primitive root word properly to uh, gyrate uh, or move in a circle like a ball would when you throw it, okay, to remain dwell. Now, 1753, uh, dur again corresponding to 172, so it's telling you it's corresponding with the above uh, word, to uh, means to reside or dwell. Okay, uh, 1754, again, it relates to 172, or 1752, I'm sorry, a circle or ball or pie, it also means ball turn around uh, about, okay, so here we have two separate words, now, the word chug in Hebrew just means a flat round disc or a flat round circle, okay, the word ball here means round like what you would consider the earth to be. Now, another question, how many verses um, did I come across that actually talked about the flat, that seemed to talk about a flat earth? I ran across about 16. I have here uh, 13 uh, here. Uh, and those are just on the fly. So, uh, I'm going to read those here, and we're going to go through them, uh, and then we will uh, move on to other evidence. Isaiah 40, 12, minus 14, ESV 12, who has measured the waters in the hollow of his hand, and marked off the heavens with a span, and closed the dust of the earth in a measure, and weighed the mountains in scales in the hills in a balance? 13, who has measured the spirit of the Lord, or what man shows him his counsel? 14, whom did he consult, and who made him understand? Who taught him the path of justice, and taught him knowledge, and showed him the way of understanding? Job 38 4, ESV 4, where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth? Tell me, if you have understanding. Isaiah 40 22, ESV 22. It is he who sits above the circle of the earth, and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers, who stretches out the heavens like a curtain, and spreads them like a tent to dwell in. 1 Chronicles 1 6 colon 3 0 colon, he has fixed the earth firm, immovable. Psalm 9 3 colon 1 colon, thou hast fixed the earth immovable and firm. Psalm 9 6 colon 1 0 colon, he has fixed the earth firm, immovable. Psalm 1 0 4 colon 5 colon, thou didst fix the earth on its foundation so that it never can be shaken. Isaiah 4 5 colon 1 8 colon, who made the earth and fashioned it, and himself fixed it fast. Job 9 8, who by himself spread out the heavens, Shamayim. Psalm 19 1, the heavens, Shamayim, tell out the glory of Elohim, the vault of heaven, Rakia, reveals his handiwork. Psalm 102 25, the heavens, Shamayim, were thy handiwork. Isaiah 45 12, I, with my own hands, stretched out the heavens, Shamayim, and caused all their host to shine. Isaiah 48 13, with my right hand I formed the expanse of the sky, Shamayim. Okay, so you can clearly see how all of these verses, all 13, clearly seem to indicate that the Father created the earth firm, that it should not be moved, okay? Um, if the earth is spinning, then it's not firm, and it's movable, okay? That goes against what Scripture seems to say. So, moving on here also, the book of Enoch in the uh, Book of Enoch, we see that he takes, or it appears that he takes Enoch to the four corners of the earth and shows him the pillars on which it stands, the earth. Okay? Very interesting. It also appears that the ancient civilizations knew the world was flat, from ancient Egypt to the Mayans. In fact, it appears that the only time Earth being round was actually accepted on any major level was in the 1900s and the establishment of NASA. Now, many people have said there's no way that NASA could have deceived us. There's just too many people that work for NASA, to which technically that's true. However, I'll talk about it in another video. Uh, there is a way. It's called decompartmentalization, and, uh, and we'll discuss it later. But I'm not going to argue that point here on this video. Uh, but we'll save that for another time. Now also, you've probably noticed right now there's a debate going on about real media versus false media, what they're calling false media. 
Uh, the problem is that the mainstream media, which I believe to be false, um, is trying to now pigeonhole the real media, which is known as the alternative media. Uh, the problem is that the real mainstream media doesn't actually do journalism anymore, and they don't press against anything. They simply tell the stories that the story writers give them to report on. There is nobody holding them accountable to do uh, to press for the truth. And so I think that's a major issue in our mainstream media. Um, and it's been a problem actually for a long time. Journalists used to do journalism, now not so much. As evidence for that, I'd like to draw your attention to Claudia Pavanis, who said, The definition of the word press is to apply pressure to something. Intense the role and sole job of journalists is to consistently press for the truth from our world leaders and governmental institutions. The moment the press stops putting pressure on politicians and instead promotes the narrative as told to us by our government, they become not the source we may rely on for objective facts, but the propaganda machine twisting how we perceive world events. If we do not press the press to do their job, someone else's fiction becomes our reality. Claudia Pavonis. Interesting, because she also stipulates... It has become a modern trend to demean, belittle and deny someone's position and point of view by simply accusing them of being a conspiracy theorist. Conspiracy, or to conspire, means to make secret plans jointly to commit an unlawful or harmful act. A theory is a supposition of ideas intended to explain something. A theorem is a general proposition not self-evident but proved by a chain of reasoning. Conspiracies are not theories, they are theorems. They can be proven by the simple fact that organized evil has a historicity. It is without question that people in all sorts of different arenas, political, military, economic, social, etc., conspire for myriad reasons all the time. The hardest thing for a modern man to do is admit that the history of such atrocities is not just a thing of the past. It's in the present and future as well. Claudia Pavonis. Okay, so, along with that, Woodrow Wilson once said, Since I entered politics, I have chiefly had men's views confided to me privately. Some of the biggest men in the United States, in the field of commerce and manufacturing, are afraid of something. They know that there is a power somewhere so organized, so subtle, so watchful, so interlocked, so complete, so pervasive, that they better not speak above their breath when they speak in condemnation of it. Woodrow Wilson, The New Freedom Many will say it's impossible to hide a conspiracy of this size. Some will say it is impossible. People have even said it is impossible because it would mean that other nations would have all had to collude together in order for this lie to be successful, to which I would also agree. But I would not agree that it's impossible, only that the collusion did in fact take place. When President Truman was in office, there was an interesting uh, situation that took place. Um, and this actually leads to uh, the ability to actually do this type of a conspiracy or lie on this scale to this amount of people. President Truman said, Secrecy was paramount. Neither the Germans nor the Japanese could learn of the project. Roosevelt and Churchill also agreed that the Stalin would be kept in the dark. Consequently, there was no public awareness or debate. Keeping 120,000 people quiet would be impossible, therefore only a small privileged cadre of inner scientists and officials knew about the atomic bomb's development. In fact, Vice President Truman had never heard of the Manhattan Project until he became President Truman. I would propose, I would propose to you that appealing to the established authority is always dangerous. It is not a practice that we should uh, grasp onto like we have here in America. So let's take a look at some more evidence, shall we? Here's a photo that has been split up into three levels. Here we see sea level, sky level, and upper atmosphere first level. Using NASA's own law of curvature, this chart you see here, this chart you see here, what we what we see in this picture is something we should not be seeing. The Earth, according to NASA, drops eight inches squared every mile. And so as we get as so as we get higher from the Earth, the Earth should disappear from our view. But as you can see, this is not what happens here. Another, another interesting fact to consider. 
everyone likes to throw out that term physics, you know, especially Neil deGrasse Tyson. He's a physics. He has a doctorate in, in astrophysics. Well, mm, I think he's a spokesperson more than anything, but, well, but, you know, that's just me. We are told that the sun is about 93 million miles away. We were also told that the sun is about 109 times the size of the earth. That would mean that the light coming off the sun and the light it gives off should dwarf our planet. This means we should not see any pinpoint of light at any point on the earth. If in fact that is the case and light travels straight in space due to it being a vacuum according to NASA, then can someone please explain to me how we have such a small hot spot on the earth? Being both a cinematographer and a photographer, I understand that a hot spot is created when a light source is directly above or directly on the object being lit up. Again, this seems to defy the laws of physics, of true physics. Any takers? Because this picture clearly shows a hot spot on the planet Earth, implying that possibly the sun is just above those clouds because otherwise there shouldn't be a hot spot. So again, I ask, any takers? None? Okay, moving on. Let's take a look at some maps here, shall we? Here is a map from 1943 from CBS at the American School of the Air. Now, this is a map called a polar projection. I think it's interesting they call it that, um, considering the fact that I'm going to show you another map that they identify differently. Now, this map here is called the Gleason's map. And it is a sailor's map, uh, what the sailors used to use for navigational charts. If you look at the top of this, of this map, here it says, New Standard Map of the World, and look here, it says, As It Is. Interesting. So if this is what the world looks like, can someone please tell me what this is? Oh yeah, it's CGI, that's right. Folks, it's a composite. Go look at NASA's website. Don't take my word for it. See for yourself. They admit it right on their own page and right in their own videos. Oh, here we see a picture of the flat earth right next to, wait, 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 what is this? That's, isn't that the United Nations map? Isn't that the United Nations symbol? Why is their symbol a symbol of the flat earth? I'll let you think about that one for a minute. Here's an interesting piece of information, and this is one that I absolutely love. This is an official NASA document, and if you look at page 30, it says, this report derives and defines a set of linearized system matrix for a rigid aircraft of con constant mass flying in a stationary atmosphere over a flat, non-rotating earth hmm hmm do you imagine perhaps nasa knows something we don't just a thought i would encourage you to go watch the video in the great deception uh, collection uh, here on my youtube channel called geocentricity animated explanation of aries failure okay so Here's another one for the astrophysics um, department. Um, NASA tells us we are spinning at approximately 1,040 miles per hour. The speed of sound travels at 786 miles per hour. That's 1.323155 times faster than the speed of sound. Now, 
This would mean that according to the laws of physics, sound coming out of my mouth would never reach its intended target. It would always be losing, uh, losing distance behind me. And NASA's answer for this is gravity? Gravity is still a theory and a theory I believe that's never been proven. I know, I know, I know. Neil deGrasse Tyson likes to drop his microphone and throw a temper tantrum every time somebody says that. Unfortunately, it's true. And by the way, this is called gravity. I gotta tell you guys, that whole drop of the mic thing, man, he's almost gotten me convinced. And wow, he can really quote someone else. I'm so impressed. And this is the guy many people worship. Ridiculous to me. Anyway. All right. Well, nobody seems to be able to answer that one either for me. So let's move on. Here's an interesting dilemma. Take a look at this picture of the North Star. Now, this is one of my favorites of all time. Proof that the Earth is not in fact spinning but in fact the stars are spinning overhead okay it has been encircled by all the other stars for at least six thousand years not intended to probably move anytime soon however if in fact we are spinning at 1040 miles per hour and earth is rotating around the sun at 64,000 miles an hour and the solar system is spinning at over 600,000 miles an hour, not to mention our whole galaxy is, a, is approximately traveling at over 1 million miles an hour. So my question is, can someone please tell me how this picture is even possible? How this video is even possible? As that would mean that the North Star would have to be in direct rhythmic pattern of our Earth. And in traveling at the same speed and direction at all times. Folks, at what point do you actually stand back and go, wait a minute, this can't be, this has got to be bullcrap. Yet we just keep following the masses uh, because NASA said so. Um, I believe the father said something different a long time ago. Um, and we just seem to like to do our own thing. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, we have been taught to ignore our own senses. While those at the top are laughing at us. Consider how many times our nation and powers and rulers have lied, manipulated, manipulated, slaughtered, genocided, poisoned, and kept under thumb their people. Just a few years ago, Bill Clinton himself admitted and apologized for American, for America poisoning and running secret tests on its own people. Don't believe me? Watch the video. This report I received today is a monumental document in more ways than one. But it is a very, very important piece of America's history. And it will shape America's future in ways that will make us a more honorable, more successful, and more ethical country. What this committee learned, I would like to review today with a little more detail than Dr. Faden said, because I think it must be engraved on our national memory. Thousands of government-sponsored experiments did take place at hospitals, universities, and military bases around our nation. The goal was to understand the effects of radiation exposure on the human body. While most of the tests were ethical by any standards, some were unethical, not only by today's standards, but by the standards of the time in which they were conducted. They failed both the test of our national values and the test of humanity. Informed consent means your doctor tells you the risk of the treatment you are about to undergo. In too many cases, informed consent 
was withheld. Americans were kept in the dark about the effects of what was being done to them. The deception extended beyond the test subjects themselves to encompass their families and the American people as a whole. For these experiments were kept secret. And they were shrouded not for a compelling reason of national security, but for the simple fear of embarrassment. And that was wrong. So today, on behalf of another generation of American leaders and another generation of American citizens, the United States of America offers a sincere apology to those of our citizens who were subjected to these experiments, to their families, and to their communities. When the government does wrong, we have a moral responsibility to admit it. The duty we owe to one another to tell the truth and to protect our fellow citizens from excesses like these is one we can never walk away from. Our government failed in that duty, and it offers an apology to the survivors and their families, and to all the American people who must, who must be able to rely upon the United States to keep its word, to tell the truth, and to do the right thing. Make no mistake, as the committee report says, there are circumstances where compensation is appropriate as a matter of ethics and principle. I am committed to seeing to it that the United States of America lives up to its responsibility. Our greatness is measured not only in how we so frequently do right, but also how we act when we know we've done the wrong thing, how we confront our mistakes, make our apologies, and take action. That's why this morning I signed an executive order instructing every arm and agency of our government that conducts, supports, or regulates research involving human beings to review immediately their procedures in light of the recommendations of this report and the best knowledge and standards available today and to report back to me by Christmas. Then there's also uh, Operation MK Ultra, along with a host of other operations that you can do research on and find that, that folks, we have been the guinea pigs of our government for a very, very long time. Okay? My goal here was not to persuade you one way or the other, but to present you with some evidence and hopefully send you off to do your own investigation. For me, it has been a journey to seek the truth, regardless of where that journey would lead me. But as for me, now I have to admit to you, I do not believe the earth is round. But I believe, as the scriptures say, it is firm that it should not be moved. If you'd like to do further investigation, I have a host of other videos in the section on my YouTube uh, channel labeled Flat Earth, other Flat Earth videos. Please feel free to look into those. Take your time to go th sort through them. There's a lot of excellent information by Rob Skiba and others who do uh, tests and all kinds of interesting uh, things uh, regarding this. Uh, Rob Skiba tests, even tests the NASA photos, which I've done the test myself and found uh, him to be correct and that all of the photos we have are CGI. In fact, if you look up at the night sky with a telescope, you don't see excuse me, you don't see the same picture they show us in their little CGI pictures. It's a flickering light in the sky and that's all it is. In fact, interestingly enough, in scripture, stars are called heavenly hosts and are, and are numbered by name or, or given names. Each name, the Father names them all. Uh, planets are in fact wandering stars and those are the few that you see moving actually in, in opposite directions from the rest of the uh, uh, stars themselves. Um, the scripture calls the sun and moon its own light source. So the sun is a light source and the moon is a light source and we'll talk about that in another video. But uh, that having been said, uh, I want to thank you for watching. And please feel free to like the video and share it with your friends. And uh, until next time, my friends, shalom.